online, on demand, and on the go. This is TechWise TV, technology you can use from geeks you can trust. And today, the gurus of geekism are talking about voice over IP applications beyond the dial tone. And it's gotten way beyond the dial tone at this point. If you think about the fact that a WAV file these days is just something, something simple to play, a recording of a dial tone to make us feel better, mm -hmm. you begin to realize we have come a long way, but there's further to go. And this idea with the Cisco Unified Applications Environment is the foundation that we have set also enables businesses to say, what can we build to match market needs people could take advantage of now. Absolutely, and I think it's uh, about time, Rob, Jimmy Ray, that we introduce uh, Adam Cheney, who is Vice President of Product Management for Radianta. Oh. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you, guys. Hey, before we get into the stuff that you're gonna, they're going to walk to us from a Radianta perspective, I think you have a very interesting background, and I want to spend a few minutes on it, if you don't mind. You, uh, you actually were with Metrios, which was the company that Cisco acquired for this technology that we are uh, going to be that we've been talking about actually for the last segment, we're going to talk about further now. So Cisco acquired Metrios. Uh, you came aboard. You were a Cisco employee for a period of time, and then you left to go to Radianta. But specifically at Metrio, so it looks like Cisco's done a pretty good job of not changing the original vision. But I'm curious, from your words, as one of the original application developers, uh, what was the vision for Metrios? What, were, what did you think? This is why we're building this stuff. Hmm. Well, there were a couple of things really that played into the product that Metrios would come to develop. The first one was uh, in the industry at that time. There was, uh, you know, SIP was still in early draft stages. Uh, HP 23 had pretty, pretty good adoption and support, but what a lot of people were looking for, a lot of companies were looking for, was what's the killer app? What is the thing that we're going to be able to put out there that's going to make everyone want to change over to IP? And they just couldn't get it. I mean, there's, there's a lot of little things that appealed to certain niche markets, but nothing that was just, you know, one thing that blew everybody away. But there came to be so many of these little niche things that different individual groups and people liked that that's really what became the killer app is the flexibility and customizability of the platform. So that's one of the things that we took into consideration at Metrios was being able to provide a way that, that just, you know, not somebody that's even that deeply technical could create an application just to enforce business rules or to accommodate personal preferences. And then, uh, and then be able to get that deployed and out in their network in a, in a reasonable way without having to build something really complex from the ground up. I think that's cool because I think more people need to realize that there is not just the killer app that's going to cause mass adoption necessarily. Because we, we talked about, we built this whole show around uh, voice over IP is about just putting, IP, you know, putting the voice on the same network as you had before. This is about saying, what can we do beyond that? And you guys built the application, we call it COAE uh, now, that we've got the Cisco uh, Cisco Unified in front of it, right. in that application environment. Yeah, Good stuff. Well, we could spend a lot of time dwelling on the past. I know Rob, Jimmy Ray doesn't like to do mm. that. So uh, let's go back to your current job <laughs> at Radianta. Tell us what you're doing there now. So at Radianta, what we're doing is building a, a number of different things. One uh, product is Beacon Office, which is a suite of office applications that, you know, for general office productivity. Beyond Beacon Office, we work in a lot of vertical markets, you know, targeting specific sectors like retail, for instance, which we'll dig into in just a moment. Um, but taking a look at Beacon Office yeah, as, a, at as a specific suite of applications, one of the things that you know, always jumps out at people, we've got a, a few different applications in there, being able to lock your phone, being able to do some personal recording and all that. But one thing people really seem to like is the personal queuing. Mm -hmm. And what personal queuing allows you to do is to get your own sort of individual call center-like functionality without having to deploy a call center. Ooh, so okay. what you get is uh, a screen like we see here where um, it gives you your personal queue and it says, you know, this is my phone, so this gives you any active calls that are going on or calls coming into your phone, and then calls that you want to put in your queue. So let's try it out. If we take a look at, say, this phone, this is going to be, this is my desk phone here, and I'm going to make a call into it, go, and then make that call into that phone, then we see it appear in the personal queue, it's showing up as that's an active call on my phone. So I, I may be on the other line, or I may just not want to take the call at this time. I can send it into the queue. You've reached Adam Cheney. I'm on the other line right now, but your call is in queue, and I'll be with you shortly. Wow. So I created a personalized message that indicated to the caller, well, I'm, you know, I'm not just blowing you off. You're in my queue. Mm -hmm. you know, I'll be with you as, as soon as possible. Well, something might happen, and maybe I can't get back to you. So I can just t open a window here and it'll do text to speech. I can type oh, in what I want wow. and it'll play it right to the caller. Very slick. So I can say, you know, sorry, I I Sorry, I can't get back to you. Yeah, oh, wow. cool. you know, but the text to speech voice can be customized and you know depending on your CUAE uh, 
deployment, you can put in different voices and uh, even attach a different text-to-speech engine. I almost, so, I almost want it more robotic because I don't want someone thinking that might be me. <laughs> <laughs> well, the idea, obviously, you is that you don't want to lose those important line, calls. Or? You've got somebody in the queue who may be waiting. You know, they really need to get back with you. This is a great way to let them know, hey, you know, your call's still important to me. They don't want to get lost in this mm -hmm. ether of, of the queue. Right, exactly. Well, so, how you, no, wait, so, how you, uh, so is this an application that's running on, the, on this PC then? So the client is running on this PC, and it's just yeah. all that is is a window just showing me what's going on on the server, really, and, and, and allows me to issue commands like move this call into queue. But all the, the meat and potatoes of it is happening on the server. It's on the CUA yeah. server. Yeah. my kind of guy. Yeah. Yeah. Are, <laughs> I, yeah, I need to He's a text that. engineer. <laughs> well, so so this, this is just hooking back into CUAE or call manager? Exactly. Or? It's hooking back into CUAE. And CUAE works in concert with call manager, but all of our, our uh, application and the personal queue backend stuff is all running on top of CUAE. That's pretty cool. Let me ask yeah. you, we had a certain situation. I used to be in the hotel business, and this came up a lot. I know you guys have an emergency alert that I want to hear a little bit more about. And our situation was such that we have a lot of guest rooms in the hotel. And what would happen is, is someone would dial 911 from a hotel room, and we had no idea where it came from. Because what got oh, yeah. the, the caller ID digits that got sent to the 911 agency, they would just simply get our address. They show up, and they expect us to guide the fire department, which we couldn't always do. In fact, it even got to the point where the fire department would begin to roll out hoses and actually clog up, up the front drive of a luxury hotel simply just to spite us because they were getting irritated either by the false alarms, which would happen occasionally at this property, or by virtue of the fact that we couldn't always tell them exactly where to go. And that's a problem, right? From a guest service perspective, we needed to know where to send emergency responders. Same thing happens in today's cube environment. I mean, these cubes look the same. Oh, yeah. You know, I, even if I know it came from the second floor, I got uh, 800 people on the second floor. Yeah, you know, exactly. where do I send them? Tell me about what you guys have done to kind of uh, get us past that particular issue. So the emergency alert product is part of Beacon Office. So it, it comes as part of that bundle. And what it allows you to do is to be able to define what you want your emergency numbers to be. I mean, in many cases, sure, it'll be 911, but you may have other emergency numbers that you're interested in. You know, if somebody calls uh, campus police on a, on a university campus, for instance, something like that. Um, what would it allow you to do is say, okay, well, when anyone on my network dials 911, then I want to do one, one, or two, one of two things or a combination of the two either conference in somebody that I designate, like again, campus police. If I'm on a university campus, someone dials 911, I want to conference in campus police so that they can be talking to the, the 911 operator and then also get the situation resolved more quickly because they're already on, on site, obviously. And then also I can send an email. And I send one or more emails to as many addresses as I specify, and that will contain the information that you're looking for, exactly who dialed 911, when they did it, all that type of information about the call. Interesting. Very interesting information. How does this scale? So this is going to scale very well. And the, the way it does it is by leveraging the power of the platform. By working on top of CUAE and in concert with Call Manager, we reap the benefits of all the different clustering and scalability support that Cisco offers so that us as application developers don't really have a lot left to do. Wow. So hang on a second now. So on this on the emergency uh, uh, application that you have there, how does that tie into emergency responder? I mean, does it, mm -hmm. it uh, we're talking about a complementary product here? It's we don't interrupt the flow of communication or anything, right? Yeah, see, that's a very important thing. I mean, that's, that's a business decision we make at Radianta is that we don't want to get in the middle of calls in general. I mean, obviously, if the customer has a special request, yeah, right. but, but usually we try to stay as adjunct to the main call processing as possible. We don't want to get, in, you know, directly in call manager stand in the way. So we work in conjunction with Cisco Emergency Responder. What we're doing is monitoring the phones for activity and then taking a response based on it. We're not having calls go through the CUAE server at all in this case. Oh, that's cool. I think from a design perspective, I'm like, man, that may be cool on paper, but <laughs> right. that, I mean, that, that don't hurt to, my network. Yeah, you got to be able to anticipate server failures and things so, like that. So I want to I want to get on to, to another example. So Beacon Office, just to make sure I understand, it, it is included with the CUAE, uh, so when you're, uh, or will be included soon, I think, with be. the CUAE? Absolutely. So the idea is that a customer would have a limited license. How does that work as far as using the product? Right, that's well, it will come with 50 user licenses uh, out of the box. So you for can, the whole suite, 50 for everything? For everything. So yeah, you could have 50 users of personal queue, or you could, uh, and or 50 users of uh, emergency alert, or, or personal whatever, recording, you, personal all the, recording, you guys all have these about different 10, 15 things. Then, can it be uh, broken out separately? I mean, so does that mean I can have 50 personal queues over here, and then on another PC I can have 50 uh, of the emergency uh, responder package too, or does, does right. the license go per seat? 
It's it's a per user license, which is essentially a per seat okay, license. Okay, okay. You know, but you can have all of the features running together on a given seat. Okay, so, that's cool. So it gives you fifty of each one, and then if you need more licenses, you can visit the Solutions Plus website and purchase more licenses. It's fully these are, uh, These are very cool. Uh, you mentioned retail. How about uh, kind of a vertical industry example? Yeah, um, that is uh, absolutely a, a good example. Thank you. Soft toss. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> that? yeah, that's that, that's called. So yeah, let's t take an example from retail. So a day in the life of somebody who is coming into a, a retail store and let's say, all right, I want to, um, I'm getting a, a stuffed bear for my niece or nephew. Mm. I go over to the to the counter and and I need a brown bear. All they have is a hot pink bear. Ah. It's like. That's not what I'm looking for. So I'm going to request some assistance and find out what's going on with this bear situation. A customer representative will be with you within 60 seconds. A little bit quiet, but saying customers, yeah, you know, customer representative will be with me in, within about 60 seconds. Then on the customer representative's phone, he's carrying a wireless phone on his hip, mm -hmm. and it displays this message that says there's a customer that needs assistance and toys. And then he can acknowledge that, and when he does, the display changes on this oh, phone. Oh, cool. And says your request has been noted. That means somebody is actually paying attention. It's just not going off into the ether. Our customer representative Steve, because we know exactly who responded to it, will be with you shortly. Mm -hmm. And we didn't have to make a broadcast over the intercom system, mm -hmm. annoy people, or anything like that. Very discreet way right. of just you know providing communication with the uh, boys. A customer, I associate. like that because how often do you push those things? And one, you either get embarrassed by the big broadcast yep. announcements yep. that says. There's a fool standing over in the paint section that still needs help, you know, over and over again as you stand there wondering some if anyone's even, yeah, is anybody even listening? You know, yeah. it's a 24-hour store here at 1 a.m. But this one actually gives you some response and acknowledgement back. i got to think that also probably allows some tracking functions to occur as well from a management perspective. Exactly. That's some of the beauty of, of you know, migrating over to an all-IP environment is that now we can start to monitor some of those things. So because we have this, this back-and-forth interaction, we know when the customer requested assistance. Mm -hmm. We know when Steve acknowledged it. And then when Steve comes over to help the customer and presses the, the button saying that they've arrived there, all that can be tracked. So then the manager, from his perspective, can look at his store and say, okay, here's my metrics. It took Steve five minutes or you know, 20 minutes Steve, to respond to this Steve customer. What is, you know, what is What's going on with Steve? Or, or, you know, or is there some other bigger issue that we have with customer service? Maybe Steve was legitimately tied up doing something else or... This or maybe no me, one responded. This just gets to me it. thinking, and so forgive me if this is not directly part of that application, but I would think I'm thinking of almost a, a tie-in from a time card situation. So I, right. as a manager, have people who are skilled in different things. What happens in that situation is I assume someone can log into their uh, log into the network. I'm here. I'm on duty. I'm ready. A manager can see. Here's all my people that are assigned to work in these different departments. Do I have good scaling of my people across the entire mm -hmm. store? And then use that exact same database of information to say I need to provide assistance to someone. Obviously, you want to send the right skilled person to assist that. That person, they've got the interaction, you can also exactly. track that. Yeah, that's exactly part of it. They come in and grab this wireless phone at the beginning of their day, they can log in, say, I'm going to be responsible for toys and jewelry, mm -hmm. then when somebody re requests assistance, it's only routed to somebody who's responsible for those departments. Well, these, these uh, warehouse style stores are getting so big, this makes a lot of sense just from a size perspective, being able to reach oh, somebody yeah. quickly. Right. I mean, think Absolutely. about it. Yeah, it really does. It really does. You know, I, I guess I'm kind of, uh, this is cool, I mean, I could see, you know, a, a manager company and show me this when we show me this video and I'm like yeah that, that that's neat you know I mean I've seen so many neat demos and stuff I'm wondering how this is all working on the back end you know I'm, mm -hmm. I'm the engineer who's got to deploy this sure. support it hmm. customize it I'm not gonna have employees named Steve all the time my, my, so I need to <laughs> change that with shift changes and stuff like that mm -hmm. how how's this work on the back end how I guess it's my well, there's, biggest question. There's a management console. So we create a management console that works adjunct to the CUAE that enables you to, put, to configure a lot of these things. Now, they may be configured by IT. Some things may be configured by the manager of the store, depending on, on how you want to do it. But, the manager uh, of the store? Well, as far He's as who's working staffing what shifts, type stuff, yeah, right? staffing. Oh, okay. He yeah, knows staffing that Steve issues. takes 20 minutes for every response or whatever it may be. Yeah. yeah. Oh. And then he can set thresholds that he expects for customer service and that, and that type of thing. From the IT perspective, you can have uh, requests being made from phones. You can also have requests being made from call buttons. Uh, Radianta does also provide wireless and wired call buttons. So it's just a simple button that's right there on the wall. It accomplishes the same thing. Press the button, and a little light comes up. Maybe you don't get a, a voice response at that time, but then Steve comes over, resets it. You gather all the well, same metrics, cool. and a uh, little lower cost of, of deployment, you know, than than coming out with seventy, you know, seventy nine, seventy fives. Yeah, <laughs> a lot more cost. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so there's a lot of flexibility, a lot of options, and um, 
but the overall deployment, you know, is, is just like everything else. We get the CUA in there, load the apps on it, and then, uh, you know, just configure the basic IP addresses for everything to communicate. And, and you make this obviously extremely user friendly for folks who, you know, they don't have to have some kind of crazy IT background to walk in the store and see it on the wall there. Oh no, see, push for help. Push, yeah, yeah. there it is. Very That's simple. That's not too hard. I, I get that. Very good. <laughs> thank you, Adam, <laughs> and cool. also no, thank, thank you, guys. Jerry. We it's appreciate really cool. it. Rob, it's, this is obviously very interesting, but I'm not sure how much of our audience is uh, really involved in IT for retail. Well, and I'm glad you brought that up because I don't, I don't want anybody to make the mistake of thinking this is strictly a retail example. Anyone that's not in retail can tune out. Right. Right. The idea, though, is this gets your gears moving. I like this for a couple of reasons. One is, is that uh, it gets you thinking about what kind of ways could I apply this this new definition of uh, that kind of frees me up to say what kind of applications could I apply to my unique business need? Because as Adam put it so well, the original vision at Metrios and gets continued now is the fact that there's not that one killer application that's going to revolutionize your business. There's going to be multiple things like this that mm -hmm. are going to make a big difference to your particular situation. So I like that. The other thing I like is that it just... Um, uh, everyone gets retail, right? I mean, I as a consumer, I go into a store, I know that this problem, I've been there before, so using this particular example hopefully uh, pr primes the pump, so to speak, so that people can understand, oh, okay, now I get the idea. No more limits. Right. Well, I know Jimmy Ray and I both appreciate the pink bear that you got us. Absolutely. Uh, bear, so yeah, I'm very you. grateful. Well, <laughs> well, this is not all that Radianta does. So you want to check out their website, radianta.com, R-A-D-I-A-N-T-A.com. Or you can also check out a growing list of applications available on the C-U-A-E. Check out the link in the console or our show notes. Well, in segment four, we are going to be facing our toughest challenge. We climbed the pinnacle of voiceover IP technology, telepresence. Can you actually be two places at one time? Hmm.